All right, guys, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm John. This is my channel. We are playing Elden Ring, but right now, before we play Elden Ring, we are doing a beer review right here. All right. Now, this is a beer that um, I have to be honest, I've had it before, but I haven't had it on the channel. So what I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about it first. So it's from it's from a um, a brewery in the area in St. Charles called Riverlands. They uh, make a good number of good brews, but they also switch stuff out a lot. So when you go there, you can maybe pick from ten to fifteen different brews. Um, all draft, obviously. And then the next time you go, say you go a week later or two weeks later, some will be gone, some new ones will be there. So pretty cool. Uh, along with the that kind of thing, they also, like a lot of the breweries, they have uh, like events every night. They'll have, you know, Star Wars Trivia Night, Bingo, some themed bingo thing, open mic night, open mic night, man. People get up there, they got some balls, man. You get up there on stage in front of all these people, tip my cap, tip my cap. No matter how bad they are, I cheer my ass off. You know why? Because they're up there and I'm not, right? Balls, balls. Okay. Anyway, so so this brewery has been around for uh, quite a while now. I'd say we're going. I'd say we're going on seven years. Might be a little longer. But they're in a really good area of St. Charles, meaning like a, a an area made for kind of like the space that you need. The building is good for what they want. They have a good amount of indoor space. They also have a good amount of outdoor space. So when they get their food trucks, like a lot of the breweries around uh, craft breweries, they don't have any food. Maybe they don't. it costs money or something like that. They have the kitchen. They have to pay regulation fees. Who knows? Whatever the fuck I'm talking about, right? It, to be a restaurant, you have all of these things you have to pay and blah, blah, blah. I'm sure of it, right? Because otherwise they'd all have food. Well, so the outside area is patio's pretty big. So people can bring their family. Don't like that. Don't like that. Don't like that. I I actually think that children should probably not be in a bar. Probably not. But you know what? People like to have their cake and eat it too. Okay, so I'm going to stay away from that and say that the area is conducive to bring your children. So there you go. Now, if they go whining and, and yelling their heads off, I, I can leave. I, I'm my own person. I'm an adult. I don't have to put up with that. Do I, do I look down at them because their child is yelling its head off? No, that's what kids do. What I'm saying is maybe you should think twice, depending on whether your child is sick or not, or what is happening, and, you know, read the room type thing. That isn't always the case. People like to have their cake and eat it too. Okay, that's all I'm saying about that. Okay, now, back to Riverlands. They have a good amount of food trucks, food trucks almost every day, all different ones. Uh, all those different events happening. They have special events happening. Sometimes they have dinners there and things like that. Pretty cool. Uh, so overall, a really good experience going to Riverland. Riverlands. Uh, Riverlands Brewing Company is their official name. Okay, so what we have today, see if you guys can see that. Murky Waters, okay? Now, the name isn't so good. It's not so good. The can art, 
Uh, my green screen's fucking it up, but my can art is not so good either. Okay. <laughs> so don't judge it by that. Murky Waters New England India Pale Ale. Okay. Here's what it says. When the waters get murky, that's when things get good. Not starting out good. Not starting out good. Murky Waters is a New England style India Pale Ale. Hopped with citra and mosaic hops. Get much better. Much better. Love those hops. With uh, citra and mosaic hops. Uh, citrusy and sweet herbal hops mixed together to create a murky mash of flavorable fluid. Might not have used that word fluid. I'm just saying. We play a lot of Bloodborne. We play a lot of Elden Ring. Fluid is not, murky fluid is not really what we like to talk about. All right. Brewed by friends for friends. 7%. 7%. Very nice. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and on the side, so it has, it has what I want on there. What I want to know is I want the alcohol content. I want the type of hops, all the hops that it has in there, and then any other information that it could give me that would lead me to believe how they made it, okay? I like all of that stuff. Um, I think all of that should be on every can. Then you have your obligatory uh, government warning if you're pregnant, um, brewed and packaged by Riverlands Brewing Company. Um, and that is, oh, designed by R.L. Ness. Well, that's a nice thing. So they actually, um, put the dude or dudette that, uh, did the can art. They gave them credit. Very nice. Very nice, R.L. Ness. I take it back. I don't think this is that bad at all. Actually, I really don't. I was, I was being a little bit facetious. I don't think it's that bad. I just think... They're using pink here. You might not be able to see that, but this is pink and this is green. So it's kind of like not really great colors, but of course they're talking about murky waters, right? Anyway. So we'll, we'll get to see what this looks like. And you got to have your Riverlands official glass, right? If I'm drinking Riverlands brews, right? You gotta have that. Let's see. You guys can see. Looks. Look at that. That color. So nice. So nice. The hazies are so nice. So my wife and I went to a beer fest over the weekend on Saturday. Tell you a little bit about that. Let's look at that. Look at that. It's beautiful. It looks just like that. You can't really see through it, but the sun, the sun, the light goes through it. Fabulous. Fabulous. Anyway, glasses off. We go to, we have a, an arboretum near our house. I've talked about this before. Morton Arboretum in Lyle. Big, huge area, lots of trees, right? That's what the arboretum is. Trees from all over the world. And a lot of hills and trails and things you can do outside, bring the kids, whatever. Well, every now and then they have events, like they have one called Illumination, which I think is really kind of funny, but that's just me. We might talk about that at some point. Just not that good. Okay. Opinions, opinions on this channel, opinions. Okay. Well, so we go, and it's a beautiful day. It's 61 degrees, partly sunny, beautiful day. They, they, uh, when COVID happened, just before COVID, the beer fests at the Arboretum were like all in one area. So they had like a giant square area where they would have, it was just a big field sort of thing. And then um, they'd have all of the breweries lined up uh, around like in a square, just, you know, um, Table after table after table after table, 30, 50 breweries, whatever. Cheers, guys. Murky waters, man. If you guys see this, where you are, 
so good. If you like the the citrusy uh, IPAs, citrusy hazies, oh my gosh. This is right up there. This is like an eight and a half, nine out of ten. Easy. Anyway, so that's how they they uh how they how it was formed. And then they would have the live band in one corner, but it's all outside and the live band stage is big. And then they'd have food trucks or 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 uh tables with food, like you know, and skillets and things and all kinds of food that you can eat and try. Well, and then in the middle area, you know, you could, there were trees and stuff, and then you could, like, you know, bring your chairs and things and hang out, listen to the music, drink some beer. A lot of beer. Okay. That was the way it was before COVID. Then COVID happened, and they're like, you know, we're, we're not going to have the beer fest anymore. And then they didn't the first year. And the next year, they're like, you know, we're going to have the beer fest. We have... 10,000 acres of land or whatever it is, we're going to just spread it out. Just spread it out. So instead of having it in one squared area, your tables and your tappers for all of these different breweries were spread all out in all different areas of the Arboretum. Fine. I like walking. So it's fine. Get a little exercise, you can drink more, right? All good in the hood. All right, so that's what they did, but they didn't ever stop it. So either either the, the people who were going really enjoyed it, or the people who were in charge of it really enjoyed it. All right, so anyway, so we go to this, this, uh, this beer fest over the weekend, and they have two a year. They have one in like June and then one in October. The one in October is like a third cider and mead and the rest beer. Well, it wasn't that good, guys. So um, we get there, we get there late, and that's fine. We go in, we get, we check in and stuff. And one of the nice things that they did was they had a check-in area in like some remote parking area, which is what we had to do, which is fine. So we go in, we start looking at the different beers. We start trying the different beers. Just weren't that good. They're like what they were before, right? Like there's breweries there that, you know, like Elmhurst Brewing Company. I really like Elmhurst Brewery Company's beer. But when you go to a beer taster, tasting thing, or a beer fest, do you want to drink beer you've had, or do you want to drink something you haven't had? This goes all along into my whole idea that if you go to a whiskey bar, you're not going to be getting whiskeys you already know what they taste like. You're just not. You're going to get whiskeys that you've never had before, because that's the point. Okay. So they basically all just had beer we've had. So a little disappointed in that. Actually, a lot disappointed in that. There were a ton of people. I mean, a shit ton of people. And that place is big. They were everywhere. And they all decide to stand in front of the fucking tables and talk. How do you get the beer? How do you know who's in line? Waiting to go up and get your pour. How do you know? Everybody's fucking commiserating right in the middle in front of the fucking table. 30 deep. Oh, no, I'm not in line. Oh, no, I'm not in line. Oh, no, I'm not in line. I'm just going to go right to the fucking front. If somebody says, hey, I'm in line, I'd be like, I wouldn't know. Because all these dudes aren't. That kind of irked me a bit, okay? Not going to lie. Not going to lie. Am I kind of a, a little bit of a snob? Yeah, you can call me what you want. I don't care. I paid the money to go in there, right? I don't have to stay. I'm a grown adult. I can critique them how I want. Just like you guys are. When you go to a beer fest, when you go to any kind of, uh, you go to dinner, right? You don't like the dinner. What do you do? Do you tell them you don't like the dinner or do you hold it in never say anything? Right? What if they don't cook it right? What if it's a steak? They don't cook it enough. But if it's steak, they cook it too much. Hmm? What do you say? 
you know, the steak costs you 50 bucks, right? You don't get the cut you want. You don't get the cook you want. $50. They can't even cook it right. They put peppercorn on it. Why do they do that? They put peppercorn on it because they don't trust that cut is going to be good. Plain and simple. You cover that steak up with something, you're hiding something. You don't have confidence. You don't have confidence that whoever's picking out your meats is picking out good meats when they buy them in order to sell them to you. Or you don't trust the chef to make it correctly. So that's, that's not as often as in my mind as it would be, I don't trust the cuts. Just my opinion, malt mates. Just my opinion. Anyway, so this is Riverlands. This is a wonderful IPA, a wonderful hazy IPA. If you guys ever see this out or see a Riverlands beer, they they like to their their little logo is is a little river right there, little wavy lines right there, like a river. So if you see that, you'll know. Hey, that was that uh that one thing that that uh John did on his channel. That's that brewery. Okay. So if you guys if you guys like your hazy IPAs, what do you guys drink? Do you guys have uh, something that might be available by me? Do you? Because I'd love to try it. I'd love to open it on this channel. I'd love to get my hands on something, sit down here, and go say your name, suggest that I buy this beer, and open it on the channel. And then I will drink it. And I'll be like, this tastes like absolute shit. No, no. I'm not going to do that. I'm just kidding. But, but that kind of, that kind of, like, you get immediate feedback. Like, boom, man. I, I opened some beers on this channel that I have never had before. Some aren't that great, man. Some just aren't that great. Some are. So not all, not all brews that I open I've had before. I just had to open this though, though, because like I really wanted to drink one of these today. Mm -hmm. So I thought, hey, I'll just drink it on the channel. Open it up, tell you guys a little bit about it, tell you guys a little bit about the brewery, what they do. Yeah. If you guys are in the area, you know where they are now. They're in St. Charles. You can look them up, Riverlands Brewing Company. Maybe you stop by there and say, hey, you know what? Somebody told me this is a good brewery in the area. What do you got? Show me what you got, right? Show me what you got. And they will. They will. So thanks guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. This is a short one. Uh, we're about to play Elden Ring. So maybe you want to just look at the date and time. Cue right on over to the Elden Ring episode. I think we're going to be going into uh, Ryo Lucaria now. Here we go. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. See you soon.